This week on Avalanche in San Diego, we go wheeling in the mountains and the desert. This film starts a series of beginner off-road trail guides to Anza Borrego Desert State Park. Grapevine Canyon Trail connects Ranchita and State Route 78 through a mountain pass. We start at the Montezuma Valley Road in Ranchita and take Wilson Road through residential neighborhoods down the actual trail. The actual starting point of the trail a couple of miles west is on private property and cannot be passed through. There is an alternative access a few miles east through Jasper Trail, which is completely inside the state park. But we did not check if it is open to vehicle traffic. The first four miles of the trail can look a bit sketched to the city folk. There are horse ranches and homesteads scattered along the dirt road down to the state park border. Respect the signs and don't be a tiny Richard driving through. We rate this trail 1 out of 10 for beginners. The trail is easily passable in a two-wheel drive vehicle. The trails in the Anza Borrego Desert State Park are open only to registered, street legal vehicles, so no side-by-sides or ATVs are allowed in by the rangers. There is some soft sand in the wash that requires maintaining speed or having all-terrain tires. Some ground clearance is recommended in the rocky sections. The trail is mostly packed dirt with small rocks and soft sand and washboard. There are a lot of narrow sections with overgrowth. There is other traffic and you need to be prepared to pull over and yield. Since pulling over is not always possible and there is a good chance of getting stuck in the sand, be aware of pullover spots when driving by so you know how far you will need to reverse. After the last ranch, we enter the state park. Note that the video is significantly speeded up to avoid boredom, driving this fast is not advised. Before Highway 78 and County Roads S3 and S22, the Grapevine Canyon Trail was a main thoroughfare to the Borrego Valley. Horses and wagons went eastward through the Narrows and then up what is now the old Borrego Valley Road. Even before that, the northern and southern bands of the Kumeyaay Indian tribes inhabited this area. The tribal boundaries lay close to the San Felipe Creek near Yaqui Well. Some used Yaqui Well as a winter camp for gathering and processing food. In 1929, San Diego County built its first prison road camp or honor farm close to Yaqui Well. The officials planted Tamaris trees to offer some shelter and today this is the site of the Tamaris Grove Ranger Station and camp located at the western end of the trail. The prisoners used hand tools to create the first roadbed along the San Felipe Creek. In 1933, it became California State Highway 78. The best timing to visit the area is in the winter, between November and April. Summertime can get dangerously hot and hiking back to the road after a breakdown or getting stuck can prove fatal. In wintertime the biggest danger is flash floods, the silent killer. Since flash floods start up on the mountains, the weather front may be far away from you and still get you pants down. Check the weather before going. Rattlesnakes, scorpions, and other critters call the desert their home, and they don't like stepping on. The trail is not well marked in the wash, and it is easy to veer off the main trail. Near the end of the trail we arrive at Yaki Wash Primitive Campground. The campground is located fairly centrally in Anza Borrego and offers a convenient spot to camp for the night near Borrego Springs. If nearby Tamarisk Grove Campground is booked up, you can use Yaki Pass as a backup. There are plenty of places to boondock in Anza Borrego, but if you are looking for a place where you can be sure not to get a vehicle stuck in the sand, this is a good bet. Other than being at a slight angle, it's a perfect place to roll up and camp in an RV. During the cooler months, bighorn sheep are known to roam in the mountains near Yaki Pass, and lucky campers might catch a glimpse of them. There are several nearby hiking trails, including Bill Canyon Overlook Trail, which starts at the campground.
We arrive at the Angelina Spring Reserve. Grapevine Canyon was and is a well-used passageway between the Centenac Cienega and the Mountain Heights. Angelina Spring was a strategic stopping place offering much-needed fresh water in this desert environment. It was used by native peoples on their seasonal rounds and by cattlemen annually moving their animals between the mountain and desert pasturage. Angelina Spring has a very large complex of prehistoric and contact-era archaeological sites, as well as the remnants of some historic-era structures used by cattlemen and miners. Native people now use the cultural preserve area for gathering and educational visits. Several locations of cremated human remains are known and the area has been nominated to the Sacred Lands Files of Native American Heritage Commission. The road to the spring is now closed to vehicle traffic, and no camping is allowed within the preserve. The Grapevine Canyon Trail itself is not a part of the reserve, and it is still passable. After the preserve, we have descended to a soft sandy wash at 2,000 foot elevation. After a little past the halfway point, the trail meanders through the wash over a relatively level ground for the rest of the way. At 8.6 miles, we arrive at a trail intersection which is very easy to miss. The Grapevine Canyon Trail turns left here, and the road that goes straight would take us to the State Route 78, about 2 miles from here. The boys naturally miss the turn.
That's all for Avalanche in San Diego. See you next week.